As we continue to move through this course, we've been encouraging you to think through the types of questions you might uh, investigate in your teaching as research project. Uh, at this point, I think it's also helpful to think about um, if you've got a question or two in mind, um, how might you try to answer that question? What types of evidence or data might you collect that will help you better understand what or how your students are learning? Now, I find that when I talk with um, STEM faculty about this, often they kind of go straight to test scores and quiz scores and things like that. Um, and those can be very helpful, certainly. Um, but I think it's also important to think about other options. Um, we'll talk more about this in our, our later module on teaching as research. But, um, you know, we talked about clickers, and clickers generate lots of interesting fine-grained data on student learning that could be useful for answering certain questions. Um, you can do student surveys. You can interview students, um, have people come and observe class um, in sometimes very formal ways or less formal ways. Um, lots of different options. Um, and so let's take an example from this week, inquiry-based labs. Let's say you want to see if your students are learning to think like scientists, right? To develop these cognitive skills that Cynthia talked about in her module. Um, you might not be able to assess that very well with a kind of quiz or multiple choice questions even. You might want to do some type of document analysis. Um, so looking at the lab reports or posters that students put together. Um, and instead of thinking, how do I grade the student? Um, look kind of across the collection of posters or lab reports for patterns that will help you know what types of skills your students are picking up um, and what skills they aren't. Absolutely, Derek. You could also think about applying that to problem-based learning. In my own course, I've, t I've gathered data for the years where I taught it in sort of a traditional format um, without so much problem-based uh, emphasis and just measured uh, particular questions on the final exam that I use year after year. And then once I started implementing that more problem-based learning approach, I can look at those same test questions and track the performance on those questions over time. And I think it's really interesting when you gather those data um, to look both at the distribution of scores as well as specific metrics about those mm. scores. A lot of people will, rep will report the average, right? Because that's what we normally think of as what's the average score. You could also report the median, but actually just looking at the shape of the distribution mm. can be really uh, informative as well. And so there's an example where I reverted to test questions, but you know, sure. at least I'm doing it longitudinally, sort of comparing pre and post uh, implementing some of these strategies. So, um, Continue thinking about questions you might investigate through your projects, as well as types of evidence of student learning that you might collect that would match those questions. Um, we've been talking about various active learning strategies for the past couple of uh, weeks. Uh, you may be wondering um, how to find time to implement all of these active learning strategies. There's a lot to do in any given course, any given semester. Uh, next week, we're going to try to answer that question. We're going to talk about the flipped classroom. That's so exciting, Derek. The flipped classroom is there's so much buzz about it. I've been yeah. seeing it all over Twitter and all over education conferences. So I'm really excited to hear more about how to actually use the flipped classroom uh, effectively. Awesome. We'll find out next week.